Hey, what's up, Paxplain followers? Super excited once again in this challenge, four star one ephemeral account, and we're going to see a lot of great stuff. We're going to deal with SQL injection payloads, with union select payloads. We are going to see how we can log in with somebody with an account that doesn't even exist. We're going to see a lot of awesome stuff. So check out what we're going to do. All right, so the challenge is to log in with the non-existing accountant, a accountant in Leadspeak at Shop OP, without ever registering that user. And this falls under the injection attacks. All right, so let's take a second to think about what's going on over here. So usually you go and register yourself an account, which is then getting stored in a database and once this is done, you can log in using your email address and password. But now the challenge wants us to log in with somebody who doesn't even exist in the database. And I'm going to show you how that works. So we're going to go to the login page and I'm going to say, well, I'm logging in as whatever ASDF, password ASDF. And I click on login. This is invalid because this user name or email address password combination doesn't exist. So let's look at Burp Suite and how that looks like in a request form. So let's click Control R to send this to the repeater. And you can see that I'm sending a, a JSON post request to the web server with email ASDF, password ASDF. So let's get rid of the password and let's say my email is a apostrophe. And if I send this to the server, I do get a SQLite error. And we already know that from previous videos, and I'm going to link you the database schema video in the top right corner, and I've actually prepared the outcome of that video once again over here. In the database schema video, we learned how to properly craft a union select SQL injection payload in order to get the schema of the entire database. And if you look on the right side, once again, we learn that there are tables called security answer, security question, users, wallets, and a couple of others. But as we are trying to log in with a user right now, the interesting table is the users table. And I've taken this information and put it down over here just to make this a little bit more pretty to read. And if we look at the users table, the table is structured that it comes with an ID, a username, an email, a password, role, deluxe token, lost login, profile image, yada, yada, yada. You see all those fields that need to be set during a user registration and this is also what we have to set in our SQL injection payload in order to solve this challenge. So during the regular login which we see over here we would only type in the email and password. So the database query would look something like this select asterisk from uh, table users where email equals whatever we type in and password equals whatever we type in then we're getting the information back and the web application can make use of it but right now we want to log in with a user that doesn't exist and I actually went ahead and have prepared a little union select statement down below here with all those fields that we see up here pre-populated so we are going to try to log in right now with our email address being accountant at juice-sh.op in Leadspeak as it was described in the challenges description. And for all the other values, I used dummy values like 1000 for the ID, empty username, accounting as a role, empty deluxe token, localhost as last login IP, and a couple of others. I just checked what I'm allowed to fill in according to the database schema and put down some random values. All right, 
So this is going to be my attack payload that we can use in order to log in as accountant. And I'm going to select all of that for now. So let's go back to repeater. We do see the original or the regular login request over here again. And instead of saying I am going to log in with email apostrophe character right now, I'm going to say I'm going to log in with my email being this entire attack payload, attack string. And what this does is it closes the email field in the query and it performs the union select and well gets everything using the asterisk from the very same table. And we're using two dashes in the end of the query to common out the rest of it. And with that, let's see what that does to the application. We're getting an authentication token. So that looks pretty good. That is the token that we've seen in previous challenges before as well. The chat token that enables us to browse the website as an authenticated user. And over here it says my email is accountant at choose minus s h o p. Let's quickly jump to O shoe shop and let's go to the scoreboard to see if we have solved the challenge. And if we look at ephemeral account, we see that it is solved. All right, perfect. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe in the top right corner. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to put them down in the comment section. With that, happy watching. See you next time.